Happy Sunday, and welcome everyone to episode 42 of Video Game Club. As always, I am your host, Tyler, and I have with me today Desmond's number one rum and coke drinker, (laughs) Austin. Hello. (laughs) And back from her hiatus, the piece of Eden of Video Game Club, Mox. That was so nice. Thank you. (laughs) How is everyone doing? Mox, how have you been? Great. Busy. Happy to be back on this not great game. As the kids say, it's been a minute. Mm Mm-hmm. Everything's going well. Have you what have you been playing besides Assassin's Creed? Pokemon Legends Arceus, which is amazing. I just love it. You walk around, there's little Pokemon everywhere. You talk to people. You catch, you know, you got you got little grasses that you pick up and little mushrooms. I just creep around and just, you know, just pick up everything. It's a good time. It's so good. It's, it's, it, it reminds me a lot of Monster Hunter for some reason. But it's not as frustrating, and I feel bad because you kill monsters in that, and then you take their parts. You can capture them. You can I capture guess, them. But you have to have their parts to make your armor. Yeah, it's true. Brutal. So when you capture them, I guess you just bring them back to get their parts. <laughs> Grind them down. Uh, we'll harvest them alive. <laughs> Austin, how have you been? What have you been doing? Uh, finally getting the water damage from December repaired. Uh, it's been a very long process with between insurance and contractors, but uh, it has been. They finally started the work. Yeah, I, I I've got some other stuff going into my house this next week that I'm pretty excited about. Um, and I guess I can reveal now. Uh, I forgot to tell it you about this before the stream box, but uh, my wife and I are having a baby. Oh, congratulations. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about that. But um, last week, or last episode when I was talking about all the games I had been beating, <laughs> uh, I've been, I made a little baby bucket list of games that I want to beat before uh, I have less time on my hands. So <laughs> PB, like pre baby. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pre pre baby list. <laughs> Uh, but yeah what are what is, of, what, what, sorry go ahead oh, I was just going to ask like what are some games that are on that list on the PB um, list PB so yeah. like the Yakuza series oh my uh, god I, I, are there any left that you haven't beaten so I'm working on four right now <laughs> I still have to do five and six and then I have to decide if I want to try and tackle uh, like a dragon as well or if I want to that mm. might be one that I could kind of like do in short bursts uh, but we'll see I don't know uh, working through, I'm actually still working through the Assassin's Creed series. So <laughs> I finished up Origins uh, within the last week or two, and so that just leaves me with Odyssey and Valhalla, and then I will have played all of the mainline Assassin's Creed games. Oh my! Uh, including gosh. ones that are like pseudo mainline, <laughs> like uh, Liberation and Rogue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brotherhood. That's Brotherhood definitely that mainline. Oh, oh it is. Say. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, the Mega Man X series, I've been trying to work through that. A lot of games that like, I have a, I have a weird section of my backlog of games people have gifted me mm. that I haven't gotten around to. Uh, so I, I want to like try to tackle as many of those as I can as well. You're such a good person. You play the games people gift you, even if you don't really want to. <laughs> well, a lot of times I want to. It's just like, I got to find the time and motivation to like sit down and- And the mood, like, right? Really go at it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes it just, it's not hitting me. Yeah, I've been, uh, we, let's see, we beat It Takes Two last night. Yep. Oh, wow, so soon, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, just last night, and uh, it was, it was, it was a game. Do you Um, guys feel closer together in your relationship having beaten this game? No, (laughs) I don't, do you feel that way, Austin? I mean, I got to play chess with you. That is true, that was fun. Done before, and, um. I thought I had you, and you really surprised me by making me <laughs> run out of time instead. That, that like, uh, that, that moment, I was just like, <gasps> and I was really, I was just very impressed that you, that with your tactics on that. Yeah, that was fun, actually, because I feel like when you play chess for someone, you get to see, like, how they think. Yeah, you know? and you did it while you were taking my queen, which it was like a double <laughs> surprise all at once. Like, I lost my queen and ran out of time. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, if you can't, if you can't win, if you feel like you've, you, you messed up one way, you can always try to go for like stalemate or time, but yeah. Um, and then I've been, I've been visiting a bunch of like Game Boy games. Like I played, uh, Kirby's pinball land recently and just some random old Game Boy games just for fun. So, um, but yeah, but we're not here to talk about all that. No, no. We're here to talk about Assassin's Creed. Because this is Video Game Club, where every two weeks we discuss a game voted on by our wonderful friends in the Bombchu Discord and discuss that game right here on twitch.tv slash TV. If you can't catch us live, don't worry. You can find us on youtube.com and all major podcast services. Thanks to the magic of editing. <laughs> um, all you need to do is just search Bombchu Video Game Club. You'll find it. Also, I just want to thank everyone um, for leaving reviews. Uh, likes, sub- subscribing, everything. I saw some uh, some five star reviews on Apple Podcasts. That was really really nice to see. Um, thank you so much for doing that, and we really truly appreciate it. Just like getting the word out there and everything. Um, as a reminder, the nominations for this episode, uh, which I believe were made by you, Mox. Yes. Uh, Chibi Robo. <laughs> um. Sp- <laughs> Uh, the Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages, and Assassin's Creed 1. Now, before we hop into Assassin's Creed, I was listening to uh, another podcast recently, and um, they do this like video game 20 questions thing at the end, and the game was Chibi Robo. And, <gasps> yeah, and I, I instantly thought of you, Mox. I was like, oh my god, Mox, Mox would have got this instantly. I love Chibi Robo. I was just surprised that like no one... I feel like they're like kind of like a wide... like. They have like wide knowledge of, of games and like no one got it, but no one got it. Yeah, oh. it's like yeah, they're on a losing streak right now. But so yeah. I, I kind of I can kind of get that because it's like if if you're playing, if I'm thinking about questions I would ask during twenty questions about a game, mm-hmm. like a lot of questions I would ask wouldn't really probably apply to a game like Chibi Robo. Yeah, they got it down to like the era, mm-hmm. like you know. Because it's, it's, you know, you can ask, like, co- what console it was released, what format, etc., right, to get it down. So they got that down, and then they just, like, could not, after that, they just were lost at what it, what it was. Um, anyway, Assassin's Creed, an open-world action-adventure game developed by Ubisoft Montreal, published by Ubisoft Proper, released on PS3 and Xbox 360, November 13th, 2007. Oh, coming, wow. Yeah, it's old world coming uh six months later to the pc it was developed on the anvil next engine um austin were you were you working at gamestop during 2007 2007 i would have been 17 yes i was working at gamestop when this game came out and i don't know why i had to think about it because can can you give us a little taste of (laughs) that era (laughs) if you remember anything i don't know well specifically around the release of this game, I remember, uh, so we would have like a video that would constantly play uh, in the store. It would just kind of like loop through all the upcoming games that were coming out. Um, and Assassin's Creed was on there a lot. And my manager, well, it was the assistant manager, but he would, he, he like, he was really good at selling people on stuff. And he was getting people to buy 360s because this game was coming out. He was like, oh, you should reserve this game. Oh, you don't have a 360? Buy a 360. You're going to need mm. to play this. It's like, this is going to be the best game oh of all God. time, dude. It's going to be it's gonna be amazing. And we had people trying to return 360s um, <laughs> after the game came out because it, <laughs> it, it was very divisive. <laughs> yeah. Um. So 360 came out in 2006, right? I think so. Yes. Uh, 2005. Five? It was late okay. 2005, yeah. Because I remember when they first came out, they were, like, impossible to find. Yeah. Um, and then you had, like, the... Uh, the only way I could find mine, I had to buy a core model, which didn't have a hard drive. And yeah. I had to get a memory card for it, and then buy a hard drive down Gosh. the line. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, 2007 uh, did have a hardware release, though. The Xbox 360 Elite came out that year. That was, like, the black one. Mm-hmm, with the 120 um, terabyte hard drive. The gigabyte, right? Yeah, tw- so yeah, gigabyte. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, oh my god, really? <laughs> Somebody <laughs> traded in uh, one of their hard drives, and they, uh, I was like, I need this. I, I need to upgrade my hard drive. And I was like, if you can go home 
and find the cable that came with this to like do the hard drive transfer. I will pay you. I will, I will buy it from you for 30 bucks. You couldn't find them online. Mm. And uh, they were like, okay, man. And they never came back. <laughs> I ended up finding one eventually, but it took a, uh, it took a, a long time. I, uh, my, I had like an OG Xbox and my place got broken into. So it's oh. been like 2009 or 10. And my parents who had like no money bought me an Xbox 360 elite. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And that was that was the Xbox. I still have it downstairs right now. Uh, anyway, I have a lot of memories with that specific Xbox model. Um so software from 2007, uh Super Mario Galaxy, BioShock, The Orange Box, Mass Effect, Halo 3, Uncharted. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was a big one. And Whoa. it makes sense, right? Like one like two years to one year after like all the new hardware came out like people are pe- finally starting to figure out the the ins and outs of the new hardware and everything yeah how to do the things yeah so it makes sense all right let's dive in a bit more into assassin's creed so we already mentioned before it's an action adventure game um set in an open world ish environment um played from a third person perspective where you control the character well you control two characters uh but mainly you play as a character named Altair um and the other character that you play in the like non dream world or whatever you want to call it in the real world is uh Desmond Miles um the goal of the game so it's it's really interesting you like th- the way that Assassin's Creed is set up I'm sure everyone knows it by now but there's there's this thing called the animus which you go into uh, as Desmond, you like lay in it and it allows you to access these memories. And so what you do is you replay the, what you're doing is you're replaying these memories. They're genetic memories. They're like memories passed down through your DNA. So they're, it's it's always of one of your ancestors until later in the series where it's uh, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, they got the technology, right? It becomes like Disney world almost like, Oh, you want to be a pirate? Okay. <laughs> oh, you want you want to live in uh you want to see what it was like in Egypt? All right. I'm I don't know if if Origins is like that, but so Origins basically the the character in that is like, "Oh, I figured out how to tap into other people's memories, like not even my own ancestors." And like oh. they just wave their hands and that's it. Gosh. Um anyway, the the, the main part where like where most of the gameplay is spent is um Played, you, you, you're playing as Altair. Uh, your goal is to create is to carry out a series of assassinations, uh, which is ordered by the leader of the assassins. His name is Al Malim. I think that's how you say it. Al Mualim. Yeah. 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 Um, so what you have to do is you you basically you, it takes place um, during the crusade. I'm trying to think of which crusade, like the third crusade. One of the. I thought crusades. it was year eleven ninety one. Is that what it was? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, you you travel um, to this, the headquarters, which is in Masyaf, um, and there's a, this area called the Kingdom, which is used, which is like a big area that you use to travel to Jerusalem, Acre, and Damascus. And what you do is you have nine people that you have to assassinate three in each area and the reason you have to do this assess these assassinations is because you like botched an assassination in the beginning of the game and you 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 like went against the brotherhood against like their law or or their creed or whatever and so you got everything stripped from you and it's a classic like oh you lost everything now you have to regain trust and build everything back up right Mm -hmm. yeah is that, is that track with everybody, Austin? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so whenever you go on an assassination, the first thing you do is you go into a safe house in an area. Um, each area, like Jerusalem, Acre, and Damascus, is separated into three districts, and there's nine people to assassinate. So it's very, like, you know, <laughs> you can see how it's structured, that one person in each area in each city. Um, and... You, you go and you go to the safe house, which the Brotherhood, like, owns, and they will give you, like, a little hint. And then what you do is 
you explore the district um, and you do several different missions. Um, there's eavesdropping, which is where you just like kind of sit on a bench and listen for people talking. That's gameplay. That's literally yeah. it. <laughs> there's <laughs> please keep that going. There's a interrogation where you wait and you just listen to someone say a bunch of stuff and then you just punch them. You have gameplay. to play. You have to follow them. To you the, don't. No. No, you don't. If you do it in the middle of the area, people get mad at you. They, they will join pu- in. Yeah, but guess what? They will only punch you for like a little bit. If you just focus on one guy, he he's gone. Like he'll he'll uh, give up instantly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I did the there's, gameplay of following to a quiet there's, area. There's pickpock. <laughs> there's there's pickpocketing <laughs> where you sit and you listen again to a conversation, and then as soon as it's over, you just go up and you press the B button and you steal whatever it is that you need from them. Excuse me. It was shift on my computer. Oh, sorry. Wow. Uh, so for, for the two people out there who played this on a keyboard, uh, <laughs> it was shift. Mox has you covered. <laughs> Austin, pickpocketing. Gameplay. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> did I miss anything? Wait, I thought you did. Uh, well, what about saving the citizens? That that no, we're talking about just oh, to okay. get clues for the assassins. That's literally all you do. I'm pretty sure. Oh no, there's one other thing. Is you uh you do these like uh. I don't know, like challenges or whatever for other assassins oh, for yeah for the these informers. So they are like either there's two things. One of them is you follow a set of flags to do like almost like a race, like a time trial race. And then the second thing is they're like, oh, I was supposed to kill three people, but I didn't. Can you kill three people? The, and that's that. <laughs> sound like a children's show. Can you kill three people? <laughs> how how would you explain it? That that come on, you know no, that I, 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 it was I'm not, basic. I'm not arguing with you. It's just the the way that you said it, the way that it came out. It just sounded like that made me laugh. It was pretty <laughs> dang basic. Uh, I believe this was the first game where the Ubisoft Tower mechanic showed up, um, which is in every Ubisoft game now. Almost like it's in Far Cry. The Assassin's Creed series. Uh, Breath of the Wild? Breath of the Wild borrowed it. It works know. differently in Breath of the Wild, though. Uh, like, the, the impressive thing in Breath of the Wild is it doesn't show you what... Like, it, it reveals that part of the map, but it doesn't reveal any objectives. True. Uh, and you have, like, the, the whole point of the tower is you have a vantage point where you can personally go up, mark spots on the map yep. of, like, oh, I need to go over there. I need to go over there. There. <laughs> in, in each area, there's also two other little fun activities that you can do. One of them is where you kill Templars. There's like three or four in each little district. The other thing is you can collect 33 flags. Gameplay! <laughs> I really hate the flags. Oh. If, I, if I remember right, I think the flags were added like. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna right get there. before launch. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And we know, and we'll we will explain why, which is just oh, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> um, but after you complete the assassin- assassination, you return to the Wait, Brotherhood. You what? missed the oh. the towers and the helping the citizens. I talked about the towers. Okay, well, okay. there's you know the vantage there's, points that you have to yes. collect to reveal the map, but then also you have to save the citizens. You do. There's, I think there's nine, like seven to nine in each district where they're being harassed by guards. You kill the guards and then you are either granted like a group of people that will stop like guards from chasing you, like will hold them. Yeah, vigilantes. Or you're given like uh, some, uh, what, what are they like? A squad of scholars that you scholars. can blend in with. That's what they call them, scholars. And you can blend in and they allow you to. The scholars do come in handy sometimes for certain them. missions. Yeah. After you collect enough intel, you do the assassination. It's usually in, well, not usually. It's in an area, uh, like a specific, like, I don't know, like significant thing in that district. So it could be like this tower or like this castle or this church or this whatever marketplace. Um, you There's like a little cutscene, and then you'll do the assassination. After after the assassination, there will be another cutscene where you find out like more info, um, and then you take this feather, you coat it in their blood, you return said feather, and then you go back to the headquarters, and you will get like some sort of like equipment upgrade, or or move upgrade or something, and then rinse and repeat, times nine. 
right? Yep. Yeah. I like the exposition with when you kill the person and they're like, well, you know, here's why I was doing why I was doing. And he's like, um, that sounds wrong. And they're like, oh, whatever. I'm dead. How did you feel about the. Uh... Oh, no, I well, just. The spoil- Wait to the spoiler. No, no, this isn't. I don't think oh, okay. this is a spoiler. Like, oh, the cutscenes, how they're kind of like interactive, like they'll glitch. And if you press a button, you can get like a different viewing angle. I don't like when you walk into from the like the headquarters and then you walk in that door and I'm pressing, you know, W and mm-hmm. then it changes to a locked camera perspective and uh, w- forward on the joystick. Yes. For, for <laughs> every- People who played with a controller. <laughs> and then W means I'm now running into the counter instead of walking the direction I was walking. And so now I have to press A because it's a fixed camera perspective. Yeah. And I'm like, excuse me, I was walking. I hate that. A couple other like little gameplay elements of Assassin's Creed. Uh, you have something called like low pro- profile actions and high profile actions. Low profile actions are used to like blend in to crowds or pass by citizens or do other like non threatening things like using your fists, for example. Um, high profile things are like running, like scaling buildings, uh, climbing, attacking people with like swords, stuff like that. Um, if you, you get, there's like some sort of like almost like GTA star meter, but it's not a star meter. It's just like you're either being chased or not. Um, and if it's red, which means like they're after you. You have to like avoid. You have to run away until it's yellow, which means they're looking for you, and then you can hide, and then they'll will like totally forget they ever saw you. Mm-hmm. Um, the the way that health works is really interesting because it's not like it is like a health bar, but also th- the way that it works is that it they they say it's desynchronization. So what ends up happening is that. The, the way that like the, it tells it in the game is like, well, your character didn't do that or he wouldn't have done that. So like if you punch like a citizen, you you lose health because your character like didn't like your ancestor didn't do that. And so they punish you for that by taking health or away. Or if you get hit, like, no, he was super good. He never got hit. Right. Exactly. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have gotten hit. <laughs> he was too good. Uh, there's also this <laughs> thing called Eagle Vision. Which allows you to, uh, like, it basically, like, puts this filter over and, like, everything, like, red is, like, an enemy and gold is, like, your target and stuff like that. Um, well, one interesting thing that I thought uh, with when you brought up high profile, low pro- profile and, mm-hmm. and different actions that you have. Yeah. Um, so, like, your buttons uh, are laid out to where, so I'm going to use an Xbox controller uh. as the example because that's what I used to play. Um, but like Y button at the top is like something involving your head. So like that's your Eagle Vision button. Uh, your X and B buttons are your hands. Right. So it's like attack or grab or uh, parry, things like that. Gentle and push. A, yep. So yeah, gentle push, stuff like that. So it's like, it, those are your hands. And then A is something involving your feet. So it's like jump or... Um, well, except when it's ball. blend. Well, the, at that point, when you blend, you you walk slowly. Yeah. Oh, true. True. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's not like a perfect metaphor, but still, but it's pretty good. It's like that. Yeah. Yeah. And the way you change between like high profile and low profile, you can make it toggle, or you have to hold down a button to change it. Yep. Right I don't know trigger. what yours was. Mine was right mouse button. Uh, the triggers don't work on the PC version, so uh, it was right bumper for me. Oh. I also had to kind of redo the controls you, you see in the gameplay uh, video. Uh, I had to fiddle around with the controls a bit because the default controls were <laughs> messed up. <laughs> but. Huh. All right. But for the most part, in a nutshell, minus the plot, that is Assassin's Creed. Nine targets. You do those little missions to kill those nine targets. As you kill them, you get little upgrades. And then there's a bunch of just trash littered around that does nothing that we will talk about. Um, okay, so let's talk about the development of this game. So uh, we were talking about it before we started the stream, actually, and started the recording. But um, Assassin's Creed was supposed to be a Prince of Persia game, at least initially, before mm. it, be- you know, it became what it is uh, when they started, you know, talking about it and stuff like that. And it was actually going to release on the. Uh, it was going to be like a PlayStation Two title. Um, and they were going to release it like, you know, 
on that generation of consoles because it they didn't quite know what Microsoft or Sony had up their sleeve just yet. Um, but Microsoft and Sony did release it and the development time did take some time. And so they decided that, okay, we're going to release it on the next generation of consoles. Um, and so it was going to be like a Prince of Persia open world uh, game with like n- new, like some new gameplay elements, essentially. So the Pr- Prince of Persia Sands of Time, I believe, is like just like a level based game. I think it's just like yeah, when that go point out? A to point B. Um, Oh, I, th- I looked it I up. I think it 2003? Yeah, you're right. I think so. Gosh, that's so long ago. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Now, Keep going. just like, imagine imagine playing Assassin's Creed and like somebody spots you and you can rewind time mm-hmm. <gasps> and be that. like, oh, let me actually go this way instead. Uh, that would be super dope. That would be And crazy. like you have limit, limited charges on your, your time rewind, right? Yeah, so that would have been really for cool. For like an assassination mission, that would be super cool. Especially since you're replaying a memory. It'd be like, ooh, actually, it didn't happen quite that way. Right. I mean, <laughs> that, would, that would fit so well. Dang. Missed opportunity. Instead, we got right? this crap. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but uh, <laughs> the working title for the game that they started was Prince of Persia Assassin. And uh, the reason for that is because, like, the, the, the main... What is, what, is, what is this title? I think it's just, like, the lead over at Ubisoft. But uh, Patrice Desolet, um, they, like, did some research in the library on, like, secret societies um, because they wanted to tell, like, a different story instead of, like, a prince story they wanted to like tell a story more of like someone who like didn't have any power but wanted power instead of like someone who was already going to be like part of royalty and so they were like in the university and they like started looking at secret societies and stuff and that's how they found this whole assassin thing and that's how uh this idea of like assassin's creed came to be like that was the start of it but it was still going to be a prince of persia game and it's going to be called prince of persia assassin Mm-hmm. Um, the assassin they they named it during this beginning like you know before it was Assassin's Creed they named the assassin Altair. Uh, it means bird of prey in Arabic. Um, oh. yep. And they they named it that because of the eagle imagery that was used heavily in uh, connection with the assassins. They also one of the things about development that was important was they wanted like Altair's parkour moves parkour to look uh, believable. <laughs> Um, but they ended up uh, having to sacrifice some of that to do like some cool stuff, like the leaps of faith, for example. Right? Obviously, it's not mm-hmm. believable. Uh, but they did notice that like some of this stuff was like described in like these assassins' books, like just like stuff that would happen that seems unbelievable. Right? Um, the whole Apple of Eden thing, which is uh, part of the story of this game, it also came from uh, like it, it was the thing that the team thought out thought up while they were talking about the assassins and templars at first it was kind of seen as something funny because like it's just an apple but then they started to look at like medieval paintings and other things and like there was all these like spherical objects so they were able to kind of say like the apple of eden could work as a concept because it could be like many different things um uh yeah they've they've this is boring uh, yeah it's not like super exciting like how they got there really it was just kind of like yeah you know and then i did this and then this happened and i like assassinations i thought they were really cool there was like you know some we could work with like some fantastical ones like jfk and stuff and time traveling and blah 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 blah. and so they uh they just kept going on and on about this like time traveling thing and then with the assassin stuff it wasn't until let's see oh they also like had to change the game engine like they initially used a there was this game engine called like the Scimitar engine, but they uh, s- they renamed it to the Anvil Next engine and made some updates to it as well. And that w- that was is the engine that's used in the Assassin's Creed games. Uh, like Assassin's Creed Two uses it as well. Um, one of the things that I was going to say that I totally forgot the, was it- um, the last minute edition of the flags. Yeah, we can talk about the flags piece, but I want to talk about the. Uh, the, oh yeah, when they pitched this game initially, I wrote this down, but I cannot. I don't remember where where I got it from, and I can't find it in my notes. But anyway, whenever they pitched this game initially, um, 
they they pitched it to like I guess like a the head like Ubisoft's execs in Paris and uh something th- so like Ubisoft like really wanted just another Prince of Persia because the other one was successful this you know this franchise already has like some it's it's already like popular from before like the older games and stuff and so this was like you know an opportunity right it was like a slam dunk like just do another Prince of Persia but they ended up like telling them like like that a new IP IP like would work they just kept telling them like no 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 like new IP new IP new IP and they they said like well it's going to be like on a next generation a new generation of of consoles and so like because of that let's make it like a new IP and just like see how it does and then you know if it doesn't pan out then they can revisit having a new Prince of Persia on new hardware instead so it's kind of a risk right it's always a risk when you do new IP I feel yeah but to go to go with something that was just like hey we can just do prince of persia you know i don't know it's interesting that they took that risk it was in e3 2006 where they officially changed the name to assassin's creed and they grew the team to 150 people by the end of the process i think it started off with like 30 people or something um so grew quite large for the finish so here's the part that we were kind of hinting at before um i'll just kind of read this my notes here so according to charles randall the lead ai developer for the game's combat system the game uh originally only was based around the main missions of assassinating the main targets and had no side quests about five days before they were to have sent the final version for mass production they were contacted by their ceo who said his son had played the game and found it (laughs) boring and gave them a, a missive to add side quests uh, the team spent the next five days hastily rushing to add the collecting side quest to give it more depth and trying to make sure these were bug free to make their mass production deadline. While a few noted bugs did fall through, they otherwise had met this target. But the side quests they added were pretty bad. Yeah, it sucked. A hundred yeah. flags in each city. No reward. Zero. No reward. You get an achievement on Xbox or whatever, or a trophy probably on PlayStation, but like besides that, nothing. Oh, you killed the Templars? Literally, you get nothing on PC. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you killed 60 Templars and you tracked them all down and everything? Great. <sighs> yeah. I think the citizens were also added, maybe, as well, as a side quest. I don't know, but gosh, just ridiculous. Um, anyway, if you want to go more in-depth on the Assassin's Creed development process, there's like a lot there to dive into because this series is pretty popular and... They've had a lot of like retros and stuff about it, so there's a lot of information out there. But all the 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 highlights are: it was a, supposed to be a Prince of Persia game, and it ended up not being a Prince of Persia game, obviously. And we almost got saved from the flags, but they got added anyway. So, um, so how did it review when it initially came out? Well, it got eights and nines. Um, a lot of people really liked the parkour stuff that was going on, the story, uh, the presentation. <laughs> the things that people didn't like was that it was really repetitive, boring. Mm-hmm. The ma- map was like really hard to navigate. The camera yes. would sometimes get like weird, like caught on weird angles, and um, that the game like never really evolved. Like I don't know if you guys noticed this, but like as I would get like new little upgrades, it didn't really change how I played the game that much. No, like not really. Um, this game was the ninth best-selling game in the UK and US in 2007 when it came out. Um, and by April 16th, 2009, Ubisoft announced that it sold 8 million copies. Um, which is quite a is lot. Is that a lot or a little? I think that's quite a lot for a new IP hmm. at that time. Especially at that time. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. That's, that's a lot for an existing IP at, uh, even beyond that time. <laughs> yeah. Gaming's definitely exploded since 2007, though. Like, it's, it's insane. Um, okay, I'm going to throw in the spoilers tag, we're going to go through the plot, and then we're going to get to our points, and then we'll wrap up here. So, if you really care about the plot of Assassin's Creed, uh, please turn off, the, mute your audio until the spoilers tag is gone. And if you're on the podcast... Or, or take our plot, and then you don't have to play this game. Yeah. True. And then you can continue on to better Assassin's Creed games. I will say this about this game. doesn't even matter. They they had some really nice uh, voice actors for this game. What? Okay, do it. Move on. I want to tell my personal (laughs) take.
Okay, 2000. So this game takes place 2012. Uh, there's a bartender, Desmond Miles, who's played by Nolan North. Yep, yep. Pretty high profile voice actor. Um, kind of mm-hmm. wasted in this world, though, yep. at, at least in this game. Yeah. Uh, he's kidnapped by agents of Abstergo Industries, which is like this large pharmaceutical conglomerate, um, and is taken to their headquarters in Rome. Um, there's a doctor there, Dr. Warren Vidic. He's pl- his voice actor is Philip Proctor. And his assistant, Lucy Stillman, who's voiced by Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. <laughs> also pretty big. A-lister. Um, Wasted as well. She had some lines. Oh my god. Um, they, also, like- they also took her likeness as well for the yep. character. Um, but Desmond's forced to participate in a series of trials uh, revolving around the Animus, which is that machine that's capable of translating those memories, uh, the genetic memories from your ancestors. So the doctor instructs you to uh, relive the early years of Altair, um, who was a member of the Assassin Brotherhood during the time of the Third Crusade. Okay, it is the third one. Um, uh, Altair basically is blinded by arrogance. He botches an attempt uh, that the Assassins were supposed to do, um, and they were supposed to get this artifact by from their enemies, who are the Knights Templar. Uh, one of the Assassins on this mission that was botched died. One of them was injured. Um, Altair wants to redeem himself, and he uh, goes home uh, to the base, and his mentor and supervisor, or supervisor, superior, uh, Al Malim, demotes him and orders him that he has to assassinate these nine different people in order to regain his position and honor. Or to get your, uh, you know, get your throwing knives. Gotta kill somebody. Oh, you want to be mm-hmm. able could- to uh, get a sword? <laughs> what? Do, so it's been a while since I've actually gone through the whole story. Do they go over the like assassins missing a finger in this one? Because Al Mualim is not missing a finger, even though so yeah, Altair is. I don't think they go over it. Um, okay, you know, I but they, I I know what you're talking about. The, I thought they did. I mean, because they, they explained the weapon, the hidden blade. Do they do that in the very beginning? I don't know. It's been a while since I played the beginning. I don't think so. Based on later games, it becomes like a pretty important thing for all the assassins to have, and for some yeah. reason, Amu Alim has all his fingers, and that bothered me. <laughs> Anyways. It is, well, that's part of the story, though. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Keep going. I want to talk about my personal take. So, I'm going to go really slow now. <laughs> oh my god. It's so boring. Uh, kill the nine people. He They're does all kill- parts of a Knight's Templar. They are all, they're secretly members of the Templar Order. They're trying to find the Apple of Eden, which is this relic that if you possess it, you have like these crazy godlike powers. Um, you at the very, very end of the game, you're trying to assassinate um, this Templar called Robert. Uh, you you do it at a funeral, which is really classy. Um, <laughs> you get Isn't tricked. He like the King of England or something. I think he's. I don't think he's the King of England. No. Oh, I thought it was someone important. You get. Uh, there's a decoy there. Uh, who's a female uh, uh, Templar. She's like, uh, use this a decoy. You end up like sparing her. I imagine maybe she comes into play later in the game. Uh, Maria Thorpe is the character's name. Like in the series, I mean, she comes into. Do you know, Austin? Do you remember? I don't remember her okay. showing it. up anywhere else. Um, you, you eventually catch up with, with Robert, um, who's in the camp of King Richard I. I think that's what you're thinking ah. of. Yeah. Um, and you basically expose, like, hey, Robert's, like, gonna betray you, all this stuff. And then the king's like, well, you know, the only way to decide who's right is to fight, because then God will just decide who is right anyway. And so they end up fighting. Uh, Outsider wins. Uh, and Robert confesses that he didn't act alone. And he, this is when you find out that Al Walim betrayed the assassins and is seeking, and the Templars as well. He's kind of playing both sides. And he is just trying to get the Apple of Eden for himself so that he can become like this super powerful being. So you go back to the base. You go to Al Malim. He's already started to control people. So like you, the thing, there, there's one cool part that happens at the end of this. Um, you have to fight like all your targets in one fight. Do you guys remember that? No. No. Okay. So all the people that you've killed, you end up having to fight them in like this ring. But when you kill them, you find out that they're just like regular people. They're just you're you're just being controlled by the apple of eden to see them as like those targets um 
so you 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 keep going. Um, you end up fighting Al Malim. He does like a bunch of things to try to like trick you with this apple. Uh, you stab him with your hidden blade, and you try to destroy the apple. But whenever you go to destroy it, you see this like secret map, and it shows all the other pieces of Eden around the world. And then you get pulled out, right? Of the Animus at mm-hmm. that point. Um, what's going on? I think it happens like a little before this. I think it's like the assassins like launch an attack on the facility that you're in to try and rescue you. They fail. Um, well, you'd also learn that Abstergo Industries is like modern day modern Templar by the Templar. Yeah. yeah, and they they are like, oh no, we've been in charge of all of the like important technological developments across the entire you know forever. History. We just give it to special people that yeah. and say that they discovered it, but no, it was us. And they also, and then Desmond's like, well, in my history books, it said blah, blah, blah. And then they were like, yeah, we also like trick, you know, like all the history books are wrong too and all this stuff. Upstair goes the Illuminati. Basically. Yeah. Um, so the assassins are trying to rescue you. Yep. They don't. They fail. But you do learn that Lucy is uh, a mole for the assassins. Um, and so she convinces the doctor to spare your life um, because. The Abstergo was like, well, once you're done with Desmond, like, just kill him. But there, but she says, like, no, 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 we need him for further testing and stuff. Maybe there's other things that he can do. Then you use your eagle vision at the end of this game. So the game, like, the doctor's walking out. They kind of have, like, what they need. Lucy tells you to spare you. You go back to your bedroom. You turn on this, like, eagle vision, and you see all these, like, crazy writings on the wall that are, like, t- foretelling some crazy event that's going to, like, kill all of humanity. And then credits and credits just roll while you're in the middle of trying to look at it and be yeah. like oh let me let me take a gl- oh credits yeah <laughs> and that is the plot of this game wow mox you have been itching to tell us your point of view yes your per- your personal take your yeah. mox take let's hear it I, it doesn't need to be spoilers i don't know do you have the spoilers tag on i can turn it i'll turn it off I like liked this game the first three times I did the same thing mm-hmm. over and over again because you know it's fun to like climb things and I don't know the the AI tell uh, on detecting you is not very good and they're very <laughs> forgiving and they'll yell at you and they'll turn red and be like you need to get off of this roof and then I just jump like two feet above one, their eye line and it's like I don't even exist anymore. One thing on that they actually get harder. <laughs> Like the further you progress, they get more just stupid. Yeah. Um, but they're still so forgiving. Yeah, but they become unfair towards the end. I see. Yeah. I didn't anyway. That. Um, and I, so I liked the jumping. I liked going at the top and looking around at the city and then doing a little, you know, dive, the eagle dive, and going and saving the citizen. And you can kill all of these guards in the middle of the day and nobody cares. <laughs> and you just walk away. That's true. And, and I, I, so it was fun three times. And then you had to do it like another three times. And I was like, mm, this kind of sucks. And you don't really get much when you go back to uh, what's it called? Masiaf. You get like, oh, now you can, when you're walking around and then you decide to run, you can charge through people. You know, that's, that's a skill you unlocked. And then, you know, now, oh, if someone tries to grab you, you can stop them from grabbing you. And it's like, I don't just like dumb little things that doesn't really make sense about how that skill was like, I'm not allowed to use it, but now I am. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really like that. Um, the grabbing also, thing especially is really weird. I like, I, I, it's not even a skill. And then they, then the way that you quote unquote learn the skill is that the guy who's running like the training ground for future assassins is like, I'll tell you, come teach these assassins how to fight better. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, a, t- a tutorial so bizarre um but the thing that bothered me the most is the voice acting because it, it was horrible Dude, yeah it, it really is it's bad it's horrible i like when you you rescue a, a citizen there's like three citizens and they are maybe four and they say the same things yes, every time yeah and they, the voice actors are terrible i'll give and you then a when kindness my brothers <laughs> will help you or whatever they say 
God. <laughs> like the whole t- city will know of your sacrifice. Yeah. It's like, what did I sacrifice? I just killed a bunch of people. Um, and when you're walking around and there's like some poor woman who's looking for alms and she gets in your way and her voice actor is so bad and it sounds like she recorded like in a shower into the worst microphone from 1956. Yes. Okay. And then when you're walking around and you have to listen to the same people <laughs> shouting so loudly these stories about like the, you know, how the, the ki- like the king of their city is the best king oh. ever. Or they're and like, just, or they're like, that guy's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about, just, speaking of people interrupting you, Mox, what about the people that are like, <laughs> there's one guy who's drunk, there's a set of people that are drunk that can bother you, and then there's an, a guy who's like, just, I, I don't know, unstable? Yeah. That will- I, I think they're, it's explained that they've been t- getting like- Oh, yeah. Given the serum. Yeah, from yeah, that one guy that you lot. assassinate. Yeah. 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 But oh, and they just like, and then they make the weirdest noises, and they why do they only attack me? Yep. Why? Did you it know, doesn't make sense. Did you know there's an achievement for grabbing 25 of them and throwing them? That's awful. Yeah. They're mentally ill. I got it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, anyway, I just hate it. And the one, and I also hated the like overworld. I forgot what it's called. Kingdom. Kingdom. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why when I trot my horse, I'm like. You know, okay. But then if I let it gallop, oh my God, all of the guards are after me. I, wh- why, why is a horse not allowed to gallop? What's wrong? Yeah. It's so stupid. Also, they would have more trouble seeing you if you were going faster. Like, not I know. less. It doesn't make sense. And they're like homing missiles. And somehow, like, the guards 500 feet ahead of me when I pass them are like, hey, you're doing something wrong. And it's like, you didn't see me do it. Yeah. How do you know? They've got walkie-talkies. They're, also, ins- I, they're you know also insanely good at throwing rocks, too. Yes, and, and the arrows when you're in the city and they're yeah. looking up above you. And, and then you can't get to them because they keep like knocking you down. Anyway, I was very frustrated at this game. I wanted to like it. I wanted to like you know all the little things that you have to do in the formula. I don't mind grinding formula games. But this was awful. There was nothing for me along the way. And so I will give it a four out of ten. Ooh. Um. Okay. I feel like Austin yours is going to be longer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go here. Um. So I played this on Xbox through backwards compatibility with the FPS boost, which was really nice because it ran at oh, like sixty frames. Oh. What? Did it? Did Did it run above sixty? No, because you're playing on an Xbox. No, I don't, I don't think so. I, because I, I'll just, I'm interrupting you. I, okay. I had my settings. It let me set it to 144 FPS. And I was like, oh, killer. I'll play at 144 FPS. But you know, when you jump, do your eagle dive into, uh, <laughs> oh hay, my God. Yeah. When you do the eagle dive above 120 FPS, you land before the game realizes that you're jumping into a bale of hay and it kills you every time. What? So you ha- Yes, I don't know. It's like the dumbest glitch ever. I, it kept happening to me, and I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I Googled it, and it's like, yep, you can't run above 120 FPS. You got to lock it. And so I did, and I didn't <laughs> smack into any more hail, ba- ba- bales of hay. But my God. What the hell? Is I that- know. Anyways, I was expecting awesome, you to have that. Ubisoft had some really terrible PC support for years to where it's like uh, Splinter Cell 2, uh, Pandora Tomorrow, I think it's called. Yeah. You can't even get that on pc anymore because the game is just so complete like the lighting doesn't work in the game and that the whole point of that game is shadows and like using <laughs> shadows to like and because of the way they made it the lights just don't work assassin's creed 3 carriages just don't appear oh my like God. people are riding around in carriages that are not there and this <laughs> is like years and years after launch they don't care they have not gone back to fix any of that <laughs> uh. it's just Oh, there's so many problems. Um, sorry, when you said sorry. FPS boost, I expected yeah. you would be smacking into hay as well. But you didn't. no, I did not. No, uh, but it it was really nice. Um, I bought this like I was on this play every Assassin's Creed journey like a couple of years ago, and so I bought it used because um, I lost my original copy. Well, I didn't lose it; it's at my parents' house. What anyway, a shame! I bought it used um for like five dollars or something from GameStop, and when I bought it at GameStop like a couple of years ago, they were like, "Why are you buying this?" <laughs> and they, they they made me feel I was telling Austin this story. They made me feel like guilty for making a purchase there. 
<laughs> and, and I was just like, this is the reason why, like, come on, like, can I just come in and buy this thing and not get harassed for buying this used game? Like, but, um, I even ordered it online. So I was just picking it up. Like, ah, anyway, that's even better. um, so I decided like, okay, I'm going to go for a hundred percent completion. I know it's going to be like awful, why? but I'm going to do it. Do so that? I started doing that a couple years ago. And I ended up getting every flag in the kingdom already. So oh my God. I only had, when I picked it up, I only had to do like probably total flags and Templars. Probably like, uh, I had probably had to do like 120 flags total between all the areas. And then I probably had to kill like 40 Templars or something. Anyway, I got almost every single achievement, almost 100%, except one of my Templars glitched. Ah! And so I have 59 out of 60 Templars, but everything else I have 100%. And I've tried. I went back. I looked at like guides, everything. I cannot find them. And that really put a bad taste in my mouth. But I, I, I'm not going to play it again for that. I'm just going to live with, well, I got all but one. Um, and it, I looked into it and like a lot of people have this issue. So I didn't feel that bad, but still. Um, this game is extremely repetitive. We've been talking about this already, uh. but... It is so repetitive. It is such like a rinse and repeat process. The map is awful, especially if you're trying to find collectibles. Like you're, mm-hmm. let's say, like you're looking at like, oh, this flag is here on your computer, and then like you go to the, you know, your whatever wherever you're playing the game, and you try to highlight it. It is just awful. It doesn't let you put, set up a marker if it's close to like another marker. It will like just snap to that other marker because it's like, oh, you actually want this viewpoint, don't you? Like, no, I want right to right next to the viewpoint. But the map doesn't care. Uh, the controls can be quite iffy at times, especially climbing, which they do improve in later games. But sometimes you would be- press like up on the joystick or uh, whatever it was on the keyboard for Mox, and like it would go down, <laughs> and it was really weird. And like it was a camera. I think it was like a combination of like camera things and other stuff. Also, like climbing sometimes was really finicky. Like you would like you'd be like, oh, I can climb this thing because I've climbed it a billion times. And you'd go to climb it and, and Desmond just like, or I'll tell you, just like sits there. He's like, oh, I can't, I can't grab that. What are you talking <laughs> about? Um, the story was very mediocre. I do think the Assassin's Templar stuff, lore, whatever you want to call it, is interesting though, like overall. I think it is really cool. And I think they do tell like, you know, kind of like the overall like Assassin's Creed story is pretty cool, like of the whole franchise. Um, but this one's just kind of like okay. Um, so yeah, I almost got 100% completion. I didn't. I played it all the way through. I was very happy when I got to the credits. I was very annoyed with uh, the just the random harassers, I guess you would call them. Like they were just t- terrible. Um, because I did 100%, I did some things that you guys probably didn't do that much of. Like, I used throwing knives a lot because there was an achievement to kill 100 guards with throwing knives. Oh my god, what a stupid achievement. I also uh, pickpocketed um, a lot of throwing knives because there was an achievement to pickpocket 250 throwing knives or something like that. Who knew you could do that? Yeah, I do. (laughs) Because I did it a lot. Um, I got every flag, which means I saw, like, some of the map that sometimes you just don't see. Some of them were in like really cool locations, but most of them were just dumb and awful. Um, the Templars were also in really like just weird locations. It didn't quite make sense. Um, but overall, for me, I would give this a 5 out of 10. Wow. And I would not recommend anyone play this game unless you really want to be like, I have played every Assassin's Creed. Like, you want to be able to say that. Besides that, I would not recommend this game. It doesn't like. Assassin's Creed 2 is so much better. Everyone knows that, I think. I think this is the game that, like, really showed that, like, a 2 can be better than a 1, right? Like, hmm. Mass Effect 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Borderlands 2. Mega Man 2. Yeah. Ooh, Borderlands 2. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree well, with you there. But. I don't... I mean, you know, agree to disagree. But yeah. a lot of people, you know, a lot of people think, like, okay, the first one's getting, like, especially with new IPs, getting the formula down in the story and setting up some stuff. And the second one, they they've learned a lot, you know, and they can expand on it. And I think Assassin's Creed two is just much better game because of all that. And I think from what I was reading on our discord and stuff, I think a lot of people agree with that sentiment. Um, so, uh, 
Austin, you've played two. Like, you know, I have played all of them except uh, all of the main series ones, except for Odyssey and Valhalla. And you would probably would you agree that two is a lot better than one? Two is much better than one, um, minus the feathers. And I would say Brotherhood is just like so. So basically, uh, from everyone that I talk to, they've got one of three favorites. Um, it's one of the one of the like usually it's two or Brotherhood, uh, Black Flag, mm-hmm. and a handful of people have actually told me that one is their favorite what? one. And I would describe every every person that I've talked to that said one is their favorite. I would describe as a contrarian, Ugh. and when I when I say that, <laughs> Chris, to them, they say to me that they are not a contrarian. Yeah, Chris is one of the people who likes Assassin's Creed one. The Chris, most. Uh, <laughs> but when I when I say they're a contrarian, they say to me, "I am not a contrarian." And you know, if you think about it, that's the kind of thing a contrarian <laughs> oh, would say. Uh, <laughs> but the one of the people uh, really liked it because uh, it's they they said it was the the only one where you really like act as an assassin mm. uh and, and what i don't know if i agree with that um and for chris it was every basically everything we hate about the game he was like I actually really liked that about the what? game which is why i tell him he's a contrarian mm. but <laughs> i really like collecting the he mindless explained to me why he doesn't like the rest of the series and i i, I like I, I i can't really explain it without getting into spoilers yeah. but um i i see why he doesn't mm. like the rest of the series and I, I can understand but i don't understand why he likes the first one <laughs> so what is your take austin on assassin's creed one okay especially since you so, played a lot of them now i i have played a lot of them and i started so i i beat this game in january of 2014 so like wow. as this game was being picked it was coming up on my eight-year anniversary of having beaten it um and i wrote at the time a quick little uh a quick little post just like detailing my thoughts on it wow uh and so i i went back and found oh, it yeah. and i'm going to read it to you oh baby uh, most mostly unedited uh <laughs> how does this compare to the banjo tui reading um it's probably not as scathing okay. but it's it's okay you know. <laughs> i'm ready both my games no offense taken keep going <laughs> banjo is trash all right anyway Mm-mm. just beat the first assassin's creed <laughs> It was fun for the first hour or two, and then it became incredibly tedious. Repetitive is an understatement. The longer I played the game, the less fun and more annoying it became. Poor, sluggish platforming and climbing. Maybe I've just been spoiled by Tomb Raider, which I had been playing at the time. (laughs) Grading, repetitive, low-quality voice work for citizens. The combat wasn't very fun either. About halfway through, I stopped saving any citizens because just about all of them are assholes. Oh, true. Most of them talk crap to you if you're anywhere near them, or talk about how stupid you are for climbing on stuff and hoping that you fall and hurt yourself. Also true. One guy even talked about how strange I was for climbing when I was using a ladder. <laughs> so apparently, <laughs> nobody uses ladders for climbing. <laughs> Next, there are... <laughs> There are the people carrying jars and boxes. <laughs> you can either walk slowly and blend in, or walk faster and gently push people out of your way. If you're blending in, guards can't find you as well, but for some reason, you need to push people in order to keep yourself from making them drop their stuff, oh. which attracts attention to yourself. Yeah. Uh, then we have the poor. <laughs> oh. This gets paragraphed to itself because they're some of the most annoying video game characters I've ever encountered. For some reason... All of them are women. It's true. Why? Yeah. I don't know. But apparently only women are poor in this Spare coin. If you can see one of them, they run straight to you, verbally assault you, demanding that you give them money, and stand right in your way, making you stop dead in your tracks. If you walk around them, they run back around in front of you over and over. There's no way to make them stop other than leaving the area, which takes time because they won't leave you Or alone. grabbing and throwing them. <laughs> <laughs> if I could have given them money to make them leave me alone, I would have oh every time. <laughs> but you have no money to give. In the Elder Scrolls, the poor are much less aggressive, and when you give them money, they will actually help you with information. Like, that's a gameplay mechanic. Yes. In Assassin's Creed, they're only there to be annoying. Finally, we have the drunks and the mentally ill. 
Now, to be clear, I have no issues with drunk people or mentally ill people in real <laughs> life, but in Assassin's Creed, they are the only citizens that I ever attacked. Ah! And, you, <laughs> and you lose life for attacking citizens. <laughs> These assholes walk around in tight areas where you need to be stealthy, yelling gibberish, <laughs> walking around, and not interacting with anyone else. For some reason, they really have a problem with you. And if you walk anywhere near one of them, which is often necessary, They'll run straight at you, push you as hard as they can, often into other people. On more than one occasion, they would push me into a corner, and then by the time I regained control of my character, they would be pushing me again, and I'd be stuck in a loop. <laughs> they add no fun to the game, and are again there just to annoy you. And the ending. Wow, those credits were quite abrupt, and not much was wrapped up. I understand setting up for a sequel, but this game didn't even try to be semi-self-contained. All in all, I would not recommend this game to anyone, and I certainly don't plan to ever play it again. Ah! Here's hoping Assassin's Creed 2 is significantly better. And it was. <laughs> um, and so, uh, it, yeah, it was. was I, I, I had a few more thoughts that I wrote down just because I realized I didn't cover all of my complaints in that original, uh, that original post. But uh, <laughs> I, this was when I was starting my quest through all the Assassin's Creed games. And I didn't play Assassin's Creed 2 for three and a half years after I played that one because it left such a bad taste in my oh mouth. <laughs> um, but uh, other complaints that I had, um, Altair is extremely dull. Yeah. Like, yeah. he is so dull. Uh, for some reason, he is the only character in the past who doesn't have um, an accent. And I was trying, I, I looked up the actor who played him and it's an Iranian American and for some reason he just sounds like a, he sounds about as white as Desmond does right uh, and I don't know why they made that decision but he has just like no intonation no personality uh, n not the actor but like the character of Altair and he's also just like he gets in trouble at the start for doing just some really stupid stuff but for some reason later in the series like he's kind of idolized yeah, um, like you can get his armor in Origins, uh, I, th I think. Uh, uh, so like, there's like a whole temple dedicated to him in one of the games, and it's like, oh, Altair, the legendary assassin. What? Yeah, like no, Altair he's is stupid. Assassin's Creed Three, you can he's, get his yeah, gear he too. Awful. I think. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, oh, God, yeah, just bad. Uh, walking around in the modern day is really terrible. Like, yes, it's so bad. It, 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 between every mission that you do, you get you, they, they take you out of the animus and you're like, okay, uh, go rest for the day and we'll come back tomorrow. And a lot of times yep. they'll let you just like freely walk around, mm -hmm. but it's yep. you walk at a snail's pace. Yeah. And initially they kind of lock you out of a lot of spots, but then later it's like you can kind of it's like, okay, well, if I walk over there later, maybe it'll be unlocked or maybe there will be something for me to look at. And there's not. Well, <laughs> There's the computer next to the Animus that you can go check, like, emails and stuff like that, and that's about you it. You can, um, so you can actually, like, steal, like, uh, like, I don't know, I think it's, like, a key card or something from the doctor, and that lets you, like, read, like, you can read his emails as well. Yeah, um, but, like, there was a lot of spots yeah, that nothing, served no yes, purpose, yes. and when you're walking that slow, yeah. it takes forever to what get there, and it's, like... It's so unreal. One of the other achievements, yeah. <laughs> one of the other achievements was like exhausting all dialogue with Lucy. What a <laughs> yeah, dumb. I Gosh, that was, I it was that. awful. Oh. Yeah. Um, uh, getting rid of status alerts is like super tedious. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. once once they're after you, you can't just leave their sight line for a bit. You have to leave their sight line and then find a place to hide, whether it's a bale of hay or like one of those um things with the curtains yeah. on them or the bench. you have to go into one of those and just wait for a while and it does it's not it's not like quick it, it takes a bit it's just like in all the later games you can break sightline for more than a little bit and it, it it just goes away so like you can just kind of keep moving on from the area um without having to go stop for, oh god it's so awful <laughs> <laughs> um like tyler I would say uh, really only play this game if you want to play every Assassin's Creed, but uh, also, you know, 
there's a reason that this is the only one from that long ago that hasn't been remastered. Yeah. And it's because it's terrible. Um, I don't think they ever will. <laughs> this is probably... yeah. I, maybe, if they ever did, it would probably be a remake instead of a remaster. And they would have to really just like... I, <sighs> completely different. I don't just know. completely like... Yeah. Yeah. To- totally different and like... The, get, I don't know how you give Altair a personality. Because mm-hmm. when you compare it between this and like two, the, the, the two trilogy, oh. Ezio has is just bursting with personality and it's just like oh this is great everything's awesome <laughs> like even revelations which is not uh the best game it has a lot of problems but like it's really good compared to this mm. <laughs> um i i don't know if i've ever agreed more with mox <gasps> than than this <laughs> uh, just at, like almost every point that i had in my post from back then and as well as like what i was talking about now is what you were talking about in in your take, oh. and I have to agree. Four out of ten, um, it, because in terms of gameplay, just barf. This game way overstayed its welcome, <laughs> and uh, then on the, I always I try to give five points for technical, five points for for fun factor. Uh, there were enough bugs. Yeah, that so it many was bugs. Just like it, it crashed several <sighs> times on Xbox as well. I got, so I got I, stuck I, in a tree. I had to restart the mission. I thankfully didn't run into a ton of bugs, but I did run to enough that I had to dock at a point for that. So mm-hmm. four out of ten, I'm in total agreement with Mox, oh. uh, especially about like the voice acting. Voice acting. and uh, like Desmond is so boring in this one. He's just like, oh, you, you, you guys took me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I know you can do a lot better voice work yeah. than this because I've seen you in other games. And this is really bad. I didn't um, know he had a different voice actor from um, Altair. I assumed they were the same because they never I said anything. I also assumed the same, which is why I had to go look yeah, it up. <laughs> it's a different guy. All right. Well, <sighs> that was a little dive in our take on Feel Assassin's bad. Creed. Um, if you enjoyed hearing us discuss Assassin's Creed and want to join us for the next Video Game Club episode, stay put because our next vote just ended and it was between Lisa the Painful, One Shot, and Earthbound which would be two episodes because of its length. Um, and the winner is, checking it live here, <laughs> is One Shot. Yay. Um, thank you, everyone who voted. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Again, just as a reminder, you can catch us here on twitch.tv slash TV every two weeks at 2 Eastern, with the next stream being on February 27th. Uh, if you can't make the live session, don't worry. There will be an episode up on YouTube and all major podcast services. Um, before we leave, I just want to say I'm trying to get like a guest to join. Um, I told Austin at the beginning of this year, like I want to try and get more guests on uh, Video Game Club. So um, if you're listening to this or watching this and you think, hey, you should really have this guest on, uh, let us know um, and we can reach out and see. Um, but we will see if they will join. Who knows? Um, anyway, Austin, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. Of course. And Mox, I'm so glad that you are back. We are so glad that you are back from your hiatus, and we hope you will join us next time. I'm so glad to be back. Thanks for having me. I always have fun. <laughs> and thank you, Andron, for helping out behind the scenes and participating in the Doom episode. That was really awesome. <laughs> Uh, I'm Tyler. This was Video Game Club episode 42, Assassin's Creed, and we're out.